Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Ben, and this is my second time that I'm trying to record this tutorial video because I recorded it once, and I went back and watched it, and I was like, that is not how I want it to go because I felt like I was explaining stuff at the start that wasn't really relevant until a little bit later on. So I do want you to know that I think that planning out a game in advance is very, very important. So before you ever start programming a game, I think you need to have some paper and pencil and you need to be drawing this stuff out and thinking about how you're going to program it. Because even if, even if you don't really know what you're doing, I think it's better just to think about it beforehand than to just jump in and start programming. But for the sake of this tutorial, just know that I have planned some of this stuff out already because I want this tutorial to go well and I have... I will be showing what I've planned to you a little bit later, but for right now you're just going to have to trust me because I want to jump right into the tutorial. So this is going to be a platform type tutorial, this first one, even though we're building a Risk of Rain type game, which by the way I'm really excited about because I love Risk of Rain. So we're going to call this game Risk of Flame, which is kind of cheesy, but you guys can call it whatever you want. Um, so let's jump right into this and we're going to create a player mask. Now what a mask is, it's just a sprite, but it's going to, um, let's do a new width and a height and we're going to do this uh, 12 by 20. The, the mask is just a sprite that you use for collisions is all. And so we want to keep our collisions simplified and that's why we're just going to use this black square for uh, the mask for our sprite. And we're going to center it and we're going to create one more sprite and we're going to call this sprite solid mask mask and we're just going to leave this one 32 by 32 which is what it'll set to default and oh what am I doing and we'll paint it black as well and you can see that in there's some things different with Game Maker Studio obviously now that we're using Studio I'm excited Studio is better than the older ones because it's better maintained and there's some newer stuff. This this tutorial, however, it, as far as I know, everything should carry over pretty well into Game Maker 8. If you're still using Game Maker 8, if you're using it on a Mac, most of this should carry over. If you have issues, post in the comment your your uh, your error messages and I will do my best to help you because most of the code, in fact, I think all of the code is going to be exactly the same. So, create a new object, and we'll call this object player, and we'll create another object, and we'll call it object solid, and we're going to give this a sprite of that mask, and we're going to give this player a sprite of that mask, and we're also going to give it, down here you'll notice mask, we're going to give that the sprite mask as well. Now the reason we did that is because later we're going to change this sprite right here to an actual player, but we want the collisions to be the same. So let's add an event. We'll add a step event. Wait, that was a collision event. Sorry. Add event, step event, and we'll just do, let's bring this over here. Uh, go to control, drag over a code. Oh, this, this is, uh, as much as I don't like their green theme, it is a lot easier on my eyes. And now I can tab instead of hitting space a million times, so that makes all the difference in the world to me. If keyboard check VK right and place free X plus uh, three, we'll move at a speed of three, Y and so actually let's add some comments here real fast moving left and right and we'll do else if keyboard check vk left and place free x minus 3 y parenthesis parenthesis Awesome. So inside of this code bracket right here, we're going to do x plus equals 3. And inside of this code bracket right here, we're going to do x minus equals 3. 
quick uh, thing to note that x plus equals 3 is the exact same thing as x equals x plus 3. So it's a shorthand. These two are equivalent to each other. And if you think about the logic behind this one, what you're saying is, I want to set my current x position, my current x position equal to my current x position plus 3. So add 3 onto where I currently am. That's what x plus equals 3 means. Now a lot of you, uh, well not a lot, but I've had a couple people that have accidentally coded x equals plus 3. Now that's a completely different thing because this will assign the value 3, positive 3, to your x position. So your player will jump up, will jump over to an x position of 3 and that is not what we want. So this and this are completely different. So watch out for that. Make sure that you do plus equals. Okay. Now we're going to do another thing here. We're going to do if, uh, let's see, place free x, y plus 1. So where is that? Think about our coordinate system. y plus 1 is actually going to be under us because the y is inverted. So if there's nothing under us, what do we want to do? Gravity equals 0.75. We're going to set our gravity else we're going to set our gravity equal to zero and that is awesome. So this right here, if we comment this in, is going to be gravity. Now we want to add a new event and this is going to be a collision event and it's going to be a collision with the solid obviously and inside of here we're going to do a code called move contact solid and it's got two arguments direction and we're going to do negative one which is the max distance if you can see that I just pointed to the screen with my finger but that doesn't work you can see down here max distance so the max distance negative one is an infinite max distance so it says whatever the distance is we don't you know whatever that is so we're going to do um, one more thing v speed equals zero so this is important. Move contact solid. What does this mean? Let's see. Let's set this collide with solid. So what does move contact solid do? Well, let's say you're moving towards the wall, right? You're falling down. You're moving towards the wall, but you're moving with a speed of eight pixels every single step. So this step you're at, let's say you're at position uh, 50. The next step, your y position is going to be position 58, right? But what would happen if you were only four pixels away from the wall? If you're moving at eight pixels per step and you're only four pixels away from the wall, where does that put you in the next step? That puts, that puts you four pixels inside of the wall. And that's not good. So that's where move contact solid comes in because move contact solid says, oh, you're four pixels away from the wall, but you're me moving at a speed of eight pixels. Well, let's just put you right next to the wall. Move to a contact position with a solid object. So we're putting it right next to the wall and then we're setting our speed to zero. So there's actually a glitch associated with this that has to do with corners, but don't worry because we'll fix that and in a later episode, so you might run into it if you're testing your game, you're going to see, oh no, if I land right on the corner, my guy jumps down a little bit. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it, okay? So, uh, one more thing we need to do. Come back into our step event. We need to set a maximum speed for our gravity. So, come into here where we're setting the gravity and do if, well, a maximum speed for our falling, not our gravity. Because gravity is an acceleration. So this is going to be a, a speed. V speed. Oh my gosh. Did you hear that? That was my physics class coming out. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, v speed. Let's see. If, if V speed is greater than or equal to 10, V speed equals 10. Awesome. I'm going to comment this, set max fall speed. 
And we're going to do one more thing. Uh, we're going to make it so you can jump. So inside of the else clause, because that means, what does else mean? Else means we're on the ground because there's not a place free. So else means we're on the ground if keyboard check pressed vk up v speed equals negative 10. We'll just make the falling and the jumping the same speed for now. And we can put some comments here, jumping. That way we can find stuff in our code easier. Okay, let's create a room. And I'm gonna go into the background actually and I'm gonna choose a different background color and define custom colors. Make it just a little darker, perfect. I'm probably gonna change that later, but let's put down some I wonder what it would do, because I know Game Maker Studio, you can drag stuff around now, like I could drag out this object to make it longer. That's really interesting. Huh. Um, I'm not going to do that though. Why? Because, because of the people who are using Game Maker 8. So I'll just draw out some stuff, put a couple of these in here. Um, Who knows? That looks good. This is not going to be our real room. This is just a test room for now. Let's put our player in here and let's go to settings and we'll call this room test. And uh, later we're going to change this so that we can have a larger room and we'll have views inside of that larger room. So let's save this and run it and make sure that I programmed everything right before I just quit this video because I want to make sure that you guys are... Okay, that didn't work. Obviously, my character just flew off into who knows where. Which is funny because I recorded this once before and I basically did the exact same code. So, let's check some things over because that's a weird glitch. That's a harder one to find because we didn't get an error message. So, gravity equals... 0.75, awesome, gravity equals zero, great. Uh, e speed. Okay, that all looks good. Let's, uh, I've got a suspicion here. Aha! <laughs> we forgot to make our solid object actually solid. So click that. Let's go back in and try again. That was my second thing to check. Wait for our compiler to come up and you can see that our character, we can move and jump. And basically what you guys have done here is, we can't move quite up against that wall and I wanna fix that. So let's go into our player mask and find out what's going on with the mask here. Well, Oh, I know why. It's because we chose a speed of three for movement. So that's a bad speed. Why? Because, because it's not divisible. Like it doesn't go into 32, which is how big our blocks are. So just for the sake of this game, we want it to, we want it to stay nicer. I'm gonna let our character move with a speed of four. Let's see what that looks like. If not, I'll put it at two. But I think four will be okay. We just don't want him to move up against a wall like that and have it look weird. Now he does it on both sides. That's perfect, right? Um, it's because of our mask. The mask is a, is a width of 12, which is a strange width. But honestly, I think the only way to fix this would be to make it uh, slower. And I don't feel like making our character slower is the right choice for where I want to take this game. So, basically we're just not going to worry about that for right now. Because when we actually put the player image in you're, and we get the actual tiles on these walls, 
you know, we're going to use, we're actually going to use my tiling example, my auto tile example. And uh, when we actually get all that in, you won't notice this little gap right there. And if you guys, if you guys really want to fix it right now, you can just change this mask and change the collisions for it. Um, go, go into modify the mask and change your collisions where your left is maybe a one or whatever. So, but yeah, so that's the, that, that is the very start. Tomorrow we'll be doing some animation. We'll be uh, making the graphics a little bit better and we'll start on shooting, which is going to be, I'm super excited for this game. Seriously, Risk of Rain is just awesome. And for us to build a game that'll be similar, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can show your friends and that is the end of this tutorial for today, this part of it. So make sure that you like and favorite this video, share it with your friends. Let's learn how to build this game together. And if you guys have any questions, if you have errors or anything like that, post them in the comments. I am happy to try and help you out with any sort of error. I'm usually pretty good at reading what the error message says and it gives me a pretty good idea of what's going on. Uh, sometimes I have to look at your code, but most of the time I can tell just from the error what's going on. So. You guys have a great day and I will talk to you guys later.